Hi, this is Dr. Charles Coons and I'm a surgeon at Southpaws. Today I'm going to talk to you about the extra capsular repair of a cranial cruciate ligament rupture using a modified technique to pass the suture around the fibella. If you find this interesting, please leave a comment. And if there are any other surgeries that you'd like to see, please leave a comment to that effect as well. A standard peripatellar incision is made. I find Gelpie retractors really helpful to displace the patella medially and increase exposure to the joint. A center retractor is then used to pull the infrapatella fat pad distally and increase exposure of the joint. The Holman retractor is then used to displace the tibia cranially to allow better visualization of the medial meniscus. It's important that the medial meniscus always be evaluated with uh, cruciate ligament ruptures. After examination of the medial meniscus, the entire joint is lavaged copiously with st uh, saline. At that point, I like to close the joint capsule separate from the fascia lata in order to reduce the time that the joint is exposed and possibly to reduce the incidence of infection. Once the joint capsule is completely closed, Gelpie retractors are used to increase the exposure to the lateral fibella by separating the fascia lata from the joint capsule and the lateral aspect of the joint. Now the way that I pass my fibella suture is to use a 14 gauge needle and to pass it in a slightly cranial direction from just distal to the uh, fibella and to then grasp that needle using a right angle forcep on the other side of the fibella. And what this allows you to do is pass the suture without entrapping any soft tissues. Once the needle is grasped on the medial aspect of the fibella, the suture material is then passed through the needle um, and then the needle is very carefully removed from the jaws of the right angle forcep and then all that's left is the suture material. Now in this case I'm using 40 pound test nylon because it's a relatively small dog. So again I'm really forcing that suture material and then uh, pulling the right angle out and grasping the suture material with the right angle. I then use the same 14 gauge needle to pass underneath the patella tendon and I pass the suture material through that needle. Then I use the same uh, 14 gauge needle to pass through the tibial crest and I try to pass it as far caudal and proximal as I can in order to better approximate the path of the cruciate ligament and uh, improve the um, isometric rotation of the tibia relative to the distal femur. At that point, the suture material is passed through the 14 gauge needle, and then when the needle is removed, the suture material has passed through the tibial crest in the location and direction that's desirable. I use a standard crimping system, and I use two crimps um, for a single suture um, in order to provide adequate stability and tensile strength to that repair.
When that's pulled tight, I then grasp the ends of the suture using uh, instruments like needle drivers or large hemostatic forceps and then uh, use a crimping plier in order to crimp uh, the stainless steel tubes. I squeeze each crimp in three places being careful not to cut the suture material inadvertently with the crimping pliers. At that point I close the biceps femoris muscle and uh, follow that with the fascia lata using just a simple continuous suture pattern. The skin is closed with intradermal sutures or with skin sutures.